This podcast is part of E2C Network, where we share the whole Auburn experience. David Housel said it best, the whole of the Auburn experience. It includes so many great sports programs, even sometimes a frustratingly uh, confusing uh, Auburn football program that decides to give you hope, dash it, and then give you hope again. But it also includes many other things like a volleyball program on the rise right now. It also includes sports that don't belong to Auburn. When you saw see your biggest rivals take a big old L on the big screen and just love every minute of it. It includes things outside of sports, academics, people in the town, people outside of the town. It includes people young, old and young. I should have done that backwards. Old and young. Hint, hint, wink, wink about what's coming up in a little bit. It includes so many different things. And that is why it is the whole of the Auburn experience, which is always best uh, taken with those in the Auburn family, which is why I bring my co-host here every single week, Mr. Austin Scott. Thank you, Austin, for being back with us for episode eight. War Eagle, Kyle. Yeah, episode eight. Can you believe it? Eight weeks we've been doing this. And uh, thanks to everybody who keeps on listening to us, crotchety old men, uh, ramble about whatever we find to ramble about each week. But uh, <laughs> glad to be back again. And you said it best, Auburn experience can – encompass a whole bunch of things uh whether they're directly related to auburn or not and we've certainly got some of those things going around today we do absolutely and we're going to try to give you guys a little bit of a i like to call it the palate cleanser of everything that you are experiencing with being part of the auburn family uh we're not going to probably be spending a lot if any time on the football team outside of just some allusions to other topics that we'll hit uh, we'll save that for probably episode nine we are in the middle of a bye week uh, so there's really just kind of a time to sit back and reflect, and maybe we'll have some clearer, more deeper assessments of all that when we get around to episode nine. On this one, though, we usually talk about what's hot, what's kind of the most prevalent thing going on right now. And it, it, this is kind of fits into that that realm, what I want to discuss here. Because as we talked about, the Auburn experience, yes, it's about the sports, the place, and other things beside that, but it's mainly about the people old and young and some of the best things in life are raising people up into being part of the auburn family with that being said austin is there anything that you would like to share with us yeah i'd be happy to and uh my wife and i are expecting twins uh coming come into april to I wish uh I had like a strobe light right now that's right <laughs> drop the confetti drop the toilet paper uh t- Two hopeful class of 2045 20, Auburn graduates. Uh, oh my gosh! Which is a long way away, folks. Uh, that long hurts my way head away. To think about <laughs> 2045. Austin, I will be. Oh my goodness! Hold on, I'm trying to do math in my head right now. <laughs> I will be 50. 50 something. Do math for me. I can't do it. <laughs> yeah, I'll be 59. Oh, wait, I'd be no, 60. No, 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 but, no, no, that's not right. I'm, my math off. 49, 49. Okay, thank you. I, I thought my math was off, but apparently yours is much worse tonight. But hey, listen, you're having twins, so I think we <laughs> will forgive you for that. So congratulations, Austin. Thank you. Yeah, my wife, Emily, and I are very excited. Uh, she's due April 20th. It'll likely be earlier. Um, big surprise to both of us that there's two of them, but we are just overjoyed. <laughs> Um, and it's definitely something we've prayed for, uh, and just thankful to the Lord for his blessings to us in so many ways, but especially this. And, um, uh, so yeah, we're excited. We are, we know we are just going in head first, know nothing. And we're just going to figure out how to play man defense from the get go. I, it's, it's really funny. Uh, you think about it that way. Uh, you guys are first time parents of twins like that. How do you even yeah. wrap your mind around that? Like that's. I, I'm sure there's people that have done it thousands of times because I know sure. you're not the first ones to have twins the first go around, but you're going to have twins of Austin Scott. Like, that's just going to be crazy. <laughs> like, tw- double trouble of you. Emily, I know, is just the best <laughs> part of you. So, tw- yes. two of you is just going to be a problem. <laughs> we need, at, you know, the, the easy thing to say would be the kids are 50 50 of each. We need, like, 70 30 with emily being 70 and austin being 30 of each of them because yeah we're we're all in for a wild time if that's the case but 
yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll know genders here in a few weeks and uh, we'll definitely have to talk about that, but uh, it is a whirlwind and a roller coaster and, but we are very excited. Well, I didn't want to start this podcast without us addressing that and maybe talking a little bit about some stuff related to that. I got to know this, how quickly into you finding out that you were having twins, did you start figuring out what sports for Auburn they were going to play? Like, I know it crossed (laughs) your mind, which sports were they and how quick, obviously we don't know genders yet, but listen, Hey, enlightened period. We're going to have, you know, uh, girls and boys playing football together. So who knows, Uh, you (laughs) know, what are the sports that you instantly thought of and how long did it take uh, for them to be labeled as an Auburn tiger in your mind? (laughs) Yeah, sure. I I think, you know, like you said, who knows what sports are going to be around on and sponsored by Auburn in 22 years or 18, 20 years. Um, I love basketball. I I do not have the physical. I know people listen to us mainly unless they're watching us on YouTube live, but I do not have the physical stature of football. Um, So you are a little bit on the short side. I'm a little short. So that one was ruled (laughs) out pretty quickly. But but with that, we know Earl loves his, uh, undersized point guards a little bit more so that would be yes uh if if coach pearl or maybe by then coach stephen pearl who knows is uh Mm. could could coach basketball in the neville crypto digital arena we'll have by then oh wait whoa whoa Uh, whoa whoa did you just throw (laughs) crypto on top of neville arena listen folks just are they're losing their minds that they can't call it auburn arena anymore officially don't start some rumor here we've already like ruined the season for volleyball don't ruin the basketball season before we even get started that is not an official statement from auburn basketball or Auburn. there's no crypto associated with neville arena my gosh austin this is what i'm talking about where these kids better have all emily Yes, all anyway. Emily. Um, so who knows by then? And then I, I did think about our volleyball program. Obviously, we're all to start to a dynasty here that we've already jinxed to begin. And so, uh, like we said, I'm on the shorter side, so they have to be a libero or a, a defensive yeah. uh, player. Um, but, yeah, who knows? And because Johnny Harris might need a point guard by then too. Listen, that's the funny thing about this is, you know, right now, just in general, we all need to be praying that yes, they get Emily's genes, but they get if there is anything locked in there for like height wise, just for sports oh, yeah. in general, it opens up so many opportunities for them. Oh yeah, uh, Emily's shorter that, than I am, so we're not going to have the height. That's why I said there's got to be something yeah. locked in there for her. You know, it, it's funny <laughs> sometimes. You know, like Yao Ming's parents are like just completely short, and he's just yeah. a giant. You know, so it's like. How did that so happen? Need- so maybe we are talking about the next center, m- men's or women's <laughs> basketball uh, player at Auburn. That's what I'm going to hope for because you know basketball is my sport. Like I, I love yes. football to death. I will choose that over anything. But in terms of just an, an overwhelming love for the game, that's why you know we when we started the E2C Network, it was an all-in-one show. We started breaking out into individual podcasts. We did a basketball one first because I love basketball and I love talking about it. So that is what I'm hoping and praying for is a men's or a women's or both times two addition. You know, it'd be pretty sweet. Awesome. I'm not going to lie. If uh, you had a boy and a girl twin and could just give one to each and then the right. really cool story that would be, I can just see it now. When oh we're yeah. Fifties doing episode <laughs> 4,000 um, that, you know, we're talking about your kids starting each at the same time on the men's and women's team. <laughs> That'd be cool. I mean, it, Auburn women's basketball has the history of Jasmine and Jessica Jones from a few years ago, starting at yeah. the same time on the same team. Um, so yeah, but either one, I think a boy and a girl that that's definitely something that would get some storylines if they could both start in the same year on the same team. And that'd be cool. How quickly will, you know, obviously we're, we're in the beginning stages of this. So all this is said, with the hope and prayer that everything goes well and all that stuff, acknowledging all that. Um, But let's just believe and be optimistic about all that. You know, what is the timeline? Like how quickly are you going to be taking the photo with these kids on Sanford lawn after that? Oh man. So uh, (laughs) there is already, and I have a picture on my Instagram that uh, at Austin G Scott, we already have a onesie each with one with Abby's face and one with an AU on it. Um, And so even even that is the picture that I just can't wait for is is the 
each in their Auburn onesies. This, and now, folks, this is this is April twentieth is with the due date. They're likely coming earlier because of twins and how the medical procedures work. And uh, so, I mean, there's a great chance that we have an Auburn basketball national championship shortly before or after or on the same day as the two come into the world. Wow. You heard it here, folks. You heard he's, it here. And he's so calling if, his shot. <laughs> if that's the case, they're in those onesies ASAP. Uh, we're starting them out right. But as far as you said, Sanford Lawn, I, just, I mean, that's going to be just the, the, the wallpaper of your phone forever, right? Like that's right. the picture you, you want um, of both of them on a beautiful day, spring day. So uh, I'm trying it'd be, to, it'd be pretty soon. I'm trying to pull this up without like showing everybody. I don't know if I'm going to be able to do it. This is like one of those moments where it's like not great for a live recording. I'm trying to get my wallpaper up without it. It's not going to work, but I, I basically have Sanford law or Sanford tower uh, on my phone. I could just like see your baby being held. held yeah. up right <laughs> Yes, exactly. Anyway, we wanted to make sure obviously because it's important to you. It's important to the show. It's important to your, your e network family and your Auburn family that we talk about that. So we would just want to extend our congratulations further to you, to Emily. And our prayer is that this will go, exactly how it is supposed to go and we will be celebrating this with a national championship apparently in just a few, in just a few months <laughs> yes thank you so, so. much and and the, the i know kyle you reached out when we announced publicly and, and you've known for a little while but um i'm just i'm incredibly thankful for Devin reached out as well she's a loyal listener and i'm just i'm thankful for uh people's well wishes and prayers and just our ultimate goal and hope and prayers that these two Learn to love Auburn, yes, but we want them to learn to love Jesus Christ so much, and uh, and we we are blessed. Here's my here's my weekly plug. We are blessed to live in on the loveliest village on the plains, and thankful that that is a reoccurring theme around here, um, of of preaching Jesus. And so that's what we want more, for them more than anything, even if they don't play in Neville Crypto Digital Arena. <laughs> There you go again. We had a great segment until you bring that back again. Now I got to deal with the ramifications of that later on this week. <laughs> but before we create more drama and make people think that it's being renamed again, let's move on to our next subject. And we're going to talk about something that is probably as far as you could stretch it out into the Auburn experience and how it fits in there. Because yes, we are focusing on our world, our sports, our teams, but let's be honest, folks, the most visceral sometimes and probably overly important is watching the suffering of your greatest rivals namely <laughs> your best rival because i gotta tell you i've been to the appalachian mountains i've been to <laughs> gatlinburg tennessee i've driven around nayland stadium and i gotta tell you there ain't nothing better than good old rocky top tennessee <laughs> taking down the crimson tide in all their glory what a beautiful game that was and just conjured up all time of feelings and that's what we kind of want to talk about here so yes is it petty yeah i don't care we're talking about it here in this part of the episode today rocky top tennessee topples the tigers for the first time in what 16 years austin 16 is that what it- 16 years which is just unfathomable like i can't believe that i can't picture auburn going that long like this state would be in shambles if auburn went 16 years or let's say either one if either one went 16 years without beating the other uh i just i can't even imagine what that would do to some people but it was incredible uh and and you will have plenty of alabama fans tell you well what did auburn do today well that that should be even more of a reason for you enjoy this because it has not been the best year auburn's been hoping for and that was a nice glimmer of hope right after a, a, a tough loss on Saturday. Um, it, it was incredible to see. And and you, how can you not like that it, it 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 ended right before a game-winning field goal was another Alabama kicker missed field goal? I mean, that's just – that's kind of poetic. And that's what we, we enjoy more than anything. And so they rushed that field, man. They, oh, they did they rush that covered field? Covered it. Let me let me just say this. I messed up apparently and had a misspeak about as you know well as a kicker for Alabama does. Uh, apparently, I said they toppled the Tigers. That's been happening a lot lately. I, I meant toppled the Tide. 
I think we all understood that, even though that was, you know, applicable to how the football team's going right now. Uh, we're not talking about that, though. We're talking about how amazing it was to watch them just get a little bit of comeuppance from someone other than us, other than mm. this. The interesting thing that's happening right now is we, as part of the Auburn experience, have been living in a time that is unheard of. And it affects so many things where your biggest rival is having arguably, debatably, their single most successful run. Um, and that's still weird to say, considering Bear Bryant's in their history as well. And having to, you know, sit there and bear the burden of all of college football, like every year people will just wait yeah. for Auburn to do the magic that they do in Jordan-Hare Stadium and take them down. Did it in 13, 2017, uh, and 19. I got them all right, right? For Gus. Correct, yeah, that's right. Obviously almost happened for Brian in his first year had it not been for a Heisman Trophy winner making a game-winning drive. And, you know, however many overtimes I keep forgetting. I think I blocked many of them out. Um. But we're seeing more teams getting to the point where they can compete with Alabama. And it's not just us doing it. We've had Texas A&M take them down. We've had Ole Miss in history take them down. Uh, talking mainly about the Saban era, obviously. Uh, and now we've got uh, – I'm, I'm sure I'm missing a few there. But we've got Tennessee finally getting back in there and making this thing a little bit interesting. Because let's be honest, Tennessee fans, we've been carrying the weight for y'all in terms of the rivalry games. Because we all know most teams have those two – Rivals, us is, you know, Alabama and Georgia. I think we've got the hardest rivalries in college sports. I'm just going to say it. I think we can yep. say that right now. Yes. But Tennessee, y'all been, what, what's been going on, man? Like y'all been slacking. And so it was finally like a weight was off our shoulders to be like, okay, at least the other rival is now actually a rival in a sense. And yeah, it, it was a beautiful thing uh, to see. So I guess the big question is, how do you think this – what happens after this? Do you think this is sustainable for Tennessee? Is this a one-and-done thing? Or, you know, I mean, have we reached the point where Tennessee is back to be able to compete with Alabama like we have in history? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think it it looks like this is Josh Heifel's second year there. It looks like he's got kind of a system that seems to be exciting and works for them. Um, he's got – getting his guys in there. Uh, I think the thing that had to happen – for them to kind of break through and is it had to be the way it was in neon stadium in Knoxville with a just plethora of people. And it had to be that back and forth game. Um, and that's what they got. And, and now there's, you know, the monkey off their back of, like we said, 16 years of them just getting hearing about it every year. We all saw the memes every year. Here's what the iPhone looked like last time Tennessee beat Alabama. Here's what I looked like last time Tennessee beat Alabama. Now that's that's gone. It it you know in a way, and I I don't love this analogy because I don't love the meat the uh, significance of it. But in a way, it's similar to Georgia finally getting their championship. They they heard 1980 for forever from Auburn fans, from everyone else, um, and Tennessee can finally put that away from from the Alabama side. And so um, I think it, I I don't love when people say that oh it's so good when certain programs are good for college football like that's what makes it because the I, I, the one I love about college football is that anybody can beat anybody and we all get shocks just when any time you know when Gardner Webb is hanging in with Liberty this past weekend well we're all still interested in that and I, and it doesn't matter who's been historically fun um, but I do think Tennessee has the brand that it's it's good to see some SEC turnover. Um, and so I, I hope so. I hope it's fun. I love when Auburn plays Tennessee. I think that's a fun rivalry. I miss that. I do too. And I, I think we're going to get back to seeing those more so. now that we change these schedules around and get to see teams more often. Like, heaven forbid that a kid would get to see a, another school once every four years. Um, I'm just glad we're getting there. And I think that'll be good. Um, and so, yeah, good for Tennessee. What I mean, we talked about it, Kyle, together. When they rushed that field and the excitement that they had, you how could you not think about what it looked, what the scene looked like in Jordan here in 2013 after the kick six? Like I, you couldn't find a patch of grass. In that right. Picture. Oh well, apparently a Tennessee fan found a patch of grass and took it home. I just saw a picture of that before we went live. Good for <laughs> <A while them>. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I shouldn't say a patch. I should say like a sleeve of gla of grass. They just took it up and like threw it into some bags they have. Um, some really funny tweets going around about that. I saw I was cackling about that. Yeah, I, I'm glad you brought that up because that's one of the things that I just kind of was sitting there and tweeted on my personal account. 
just and I mean this sincerely, like for them and for like just the whole, it just made me feel the smallest bit like I felt so many years ago after, during the kids kick six, being there and knowing what that moment of elation felt like. Uh, yes, it is because it's Alabama, your biggest rival, but that's in, yeah. in any moment like that, just seeing how something so miraculously goes down. And rushing the field and just sheer joy. Austin, I remember just finding this random dude in the middle of that monstrosity of a mass of people. And just like we locked eyes and I just pointed at him and said, you right there, you bring it in right here for the real thing. And we just <laughs> ran into each other's arm and just hugged, <laughs> hugged it out just forever. And like for no reason, had no, never saw the dude again, probably never will see him again. Yeah. But it was just one of the craziest moments of elation. And you saw the sights of that and then tearing down the goalposts, taking them out of the Great. stadium. Did we get confirmation that they did not throw one of them over the side like they were looking like they were going to do? Did they take it just out? I don't know. I saw they threw one in the river. Yes. I was – apparently <laughs> that is – has. I haven't looked this up. But I saw some people say that has some historical significance. Like they've done that before. But I was just – shocked when i saw we went through all that and you're chucking it in the tennessee river mm -hmm. uh because like when Ole miss beat them you know one of those first years with freeze they tore them down and you saw it like you saw pictures they got it back in someone's apartment and they're cutting it up and they're giving it to their friends and everything and so that's what i'm expecting like i think it's a lost art to tear the goalpost down like i think that is something that that we see like really old pictures of of people right hanging on they fall and so it's kind of it looks like it's coming back a little bit um yeah. but i could not believe they just chucked it in the river like is it yes. just gonna lay at the bottom of the tennessee river listen folks listen we are happy for you tennessee fans but god y'all a weird bunch <laughs> i mean yeah y'all y'all bring mustard bottles <laughs> mustard bottles throw in your goalpost in the river look i love the enthusiasm i'm glad you're happy i'm glad you took down alabama maybe you can keep it up i don't know uh, we're we're wanting to see you again, but God, y'all are weird, man. Uh, y'all sing about Rocky Top. <laughs> it's just, it's uh, it's an interesting breed of folks, and I'm sure they say the exact same thing about me. Sure. But uh, you know, again, it's not our game, and in this season that we're having, it's not necessarily the uh, you know thing that helps us in any way, other than just watching the sufferings of our biggest rival. But it is certainly something that we all live a part of because it's college football. And like you yes. said, uh, you know, we all have memories in the past of goalposts going down all the time, and it's a lost art. And seeing that, seeing the elation from people, the rushing of the field, the fireworks going off, I remember th them doing that for the kick six. It just brings back those memories and just makes you relive it again in your mind in a different way than just kind of saying, oh, yeah, I was part of the kick six. It's like, no, that was me, yeah. 2013. It's exactly. such a surreal feeling. I mean, there's there's been so many pictures that have come out of whether it's some college kid hanging on the, off the goalpost or, you know, the elderly Tennessee fan who's probably just, am I ever going to see Alabama lose to us again? And and just unbridled joy on the field. And, and, and I just hope folks, let's rein it in here to Auburn maybe somehow. Just remember that it's the game, it brings us so much joy and that's so fun. Uh, and just remember – it's just a game, but it, it can certainly give us those feelings. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and we're think we, we enjoy that if we keep it in perspective, but um, yeah, good for them. What a, that was a crazy scene, crazy scene. Wonderful moment full of elation and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and thousands of dollars of fines, but was it worth so it? Many. <laughs> it was so worth it. Absolutely. Uh, all right, let's move into the final segment. We'll begin discussing uh, another Auburn sport uh, that we are slowly but surely gearing up for right. uh, in many ways, and it's about time. Uh, we are ready to have shooty hoops back shooty. in <laughs> shooty hoops. I've seen that on the Twitters. I like that. You know, that's not, I can't take credit for that. Um, <laughs> I think it's – I'm trying to remember who actually it is. I feel like it's a, one of the shooty bigger hoops. Twitter accounts. Uh, kind of coined that term or, or made it popular. But uh, Auburn Shooty Hoops is uh, very quickly going to be here before you know it. We're uh, November 12th, I think it is. George Mason. I know George Mason's the first official Seven. game. Seventh. Is that it? I'm sorry. I only um, know just because I, I got 
Emily and I got our tickets this past week, so we're, we'll we'll get to be there. Yeah, the I'm first. excited. It's like on a it. Monday night. It's yes. very odd on a Monday. But. You know, that's been happening a lot lately. Um, I've noticed that you would think for the first, and, uh, listen, there are things out of control for that Auburn can and can't control. And sometimes you, it depends sure. on their schedule, George Mason's schedule, but you'd think you would like have that on a Friday night, ready yeah. to roll the night before a big, like Arkansas, you know, we, I know that's too early, but either you, you understand sure. my point. Yes. Yeah. Um, but it's here. So one of the bigger things this past week too, um, is we had Auburn's pro day. And it's a little bit different. I feel like I've not had the opportunity to go to pro day. Had I do I, if I had lived in Auburn and actually been there, I would have probably been able to, to go to it actually. Um, my understanding is that like for football, when they have their pro days, it's mainly intended for people that have graduated and, and maybe even people that have not been for a while to come back and get looked at by scouts. But this was interesting because at this pro day, we have everybody currently on the team competing and i don't know if anybody else yeah. came back to kind of get those looks at by the scouts had invitations from coach pearl and the staff 28 nba teams all of 30 arrive in auburn to watch our athletes austin may i remind you a few <laughs> short years ago this was not even a reality for one of these teams to probably come it did it yes yeah, scouts came obviously but not to this extent and not to this level like yeah. how far we have come was displayed in the interest, not just by fans, but by NBA scouts for Auburn basketball's program. It was, it's a beautiful sight to see. Oh, absolutely. And it's just another notch in the belt for Bruce Pearl of what he's done with this program and the heights he's brought it to um, things that we just, it's, it's unfathomable even as we're in it to see um, something be a reality for. But um, I think it is so fascinating that they, do from freshmen if you just got here on campus you know if in the summer all the way to i don't know if anyone did come back but all the way to our se- our sixth year seniors at jasper you're you're contributing in pro day um yeah. and and that's great you know i think that's awesome to for scouts even though we'll say chance westry is is I, well i guess you can you know go to the draft even after a year but even if he's two to three years away they can see some say like we're going to remember that kid he's got some potential he's got the ability Um, we'll have to keep checking in with with coach Pearl to see where he gets and so um, I think it's awesome I guess the magnitude of the amount of people for football doesn't allow you to do that as well and and it would just be you know a a couple days thing instead of one but um, I I haven't really looked at the measurables of pro day to see how everyone did Um, I haven't done that much either but I I think it's fascinating that 28 of 30 teams came. I don't know if, you know, how many came last year or the year before, but I just, like you said, the thought that even one would use used to come. And now that many just have an interest because Auburn has arrived on that national stage. Um, And coach Bruce Pearl has been, has come to Auburn and made it that national stage. Um, It's just incredible. It's, It's hard to think about. It really is just to kind of uh, put it towards because, you know, we've all of us have lived through the Barbie eras, um, the bad part of the Lebo eras. And, you know, I I hate it for Lebo because there was a moment there where he seemed to kind of be getting it figured out and it just never stuck. And so I do hate it for him. But we all know how bad Barbie was. And I I, I know stories that I cannot share. Uh, It was much worse than anybody else uh, either were aware of. Uh, And that comes from people directly on the team that's not me saying i know a friend and knows a friend that's that's someone who was there witnessed it all and that's all i'm gonna say (laughs) so it has come a long way uh and with pro day you know just some quick thoughts about it and maybe things it seemed like alan flanagan really measured out well um graded out well for them which is a great thing for here i am a i've said this on my personal twitter account that i am making uh, it my mission to put respect ballot back in Alan Flanagan's name. Now that is obviously his job to do more than mine, uh, but I will definitely be tooting that horn as loud and proud as I can, because I love a good redemption story and not that he's fallen so far off. He's just, the main thing is this injury and trying to get back from that and find your place yeah. in the team where you come back and there's superstars galore, Jafari and Walker, and they're still stars. And 
you know, your supposed stars that we're going to have in Janai and Yuan and Chance and you know everybody else that's already still here. Um, it's it's one of those things that I'm really happy to hear those things because I think people forget that about some of those players, right? You know, you could say it yeah. about Zep Jasper as well, who actually wasn't able to participate in Pro Day because he was sick. Um, but they do the things that get noticed by the scouts and not by the fans or, or they have the measurables that get noticed by that. And so that's what this, this day is all about is not necessarily to win a draft spot. It's to, or a um, combine invite. It's to get you in the conversation with these NBA scouts so they can give you feedback and say, if we were in, to be interested in you, this is what we would need to see from you. And so that's a really big step. And when Coach Pra really, uh, we have the press conference up on our channel. If you'd like to watch it, um, go back and listen to how he talks about that. This is not a make or break moment for these guys, but this is simply the first opportunity for some of them right. to get feedback that they really need to understand what their opportunities are and aren't to, to get better. And boy, do we have a lot of talent on this team. I mean, who, who do you think right now obviously stands the best chance of, of going in the draft high right now? Yeah, I mean, I think I, I, you mentioned it. It's time to put respect back on his name. But Alan Flanagan was showing up in draft for his injury. And and even when Auburn fans were, were wondering why he's still getting starts. Like Alan Flanagan was showing up in second round and late first round at some point. So I think Alan, with a great another great year to kind of put his full resume together, has a chance to be drafted. Um, I think af from there, you look at, you're not looking for Janai Broom to exactly replicate what Walker Kessler did. I mean, how can you ask a guy to just come in and right. say, hey, do you want to be SEC Defensive Player of the Year? National um, Defensive Player of the Year, too. And yes, thank you, National Defensive. Like, and even Yohan, are you going to ask him to replace Jabari Smith, who should have been the number one overall pick or win no magic? Uh, some teams are regretting that. Now, let me Hold on, since you brought it up, and now I'm just going off on things tonight. Orlando Magic, what are you doing? You had a chance to literally win the mm. biggest, the best fan base over to you forever by bringing together Chuma Okiki and Jabari Smith, and you failed. What is your problem? I, I cannot for the life of me understand how you think that Pablo Bancaro is going to bring you more attention, more notoriety than the entirety of the Auburn family literally attaching themselves to that. Matter of mm. fact, this is going way too much into it. I'm a huge Disney World fan. I'll just say it right yeah. here. I don't talk about that a whole lot. You want to talk about that? It's in Orlando. I would literally probably move there at this point if I could have Chuma, Jabari, and Disney World all in the same three, all three of those things in the same place. I am done. Sorry. There's our weekly crotch deal man rant. So we had to get it in somehow. <laughs> uh, I, I wonder, were they one of the teams that showed up? I'm sure they were. I, I mean, I, odds, I odds are. One, yeah, probably. I don't know for sure. Yeah, um, I'm not. I, I'm not sure actually. I'd be interested to see if 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 Coach Pearl and some staff made any any side comments. Like, well, you guys, you know, it's like you, you missed you out. Got these seats set aside for all the teams, and then you put the Orlando Magic way over there at the end. <laughs> just, just think about what you did. You think yeah. about what you did. You're in timeout. <laughs> yeah, but. Uh, I don't know where I was. Janai Broom, I think he has a chance. You know, he's on a he's coming from Morehead State. He's on a much bigger profile. Um, he's gonna be in a system that allowed Walker Kessler to do what he could he could do. Um, and so I think he has a chance with a great year. All these guys have to produce. You know, like you gotta execute, you still gotta play. Just because you come to Auburn now and Auburn has that national recognition doesn't mean you're just gonna get drafted because of the name. Like you have to still execute and play and win some games. Um and do it well and do it consistently. So I'm really excited. I think this is just a great team. Uh, I think it's going to fit really well together. Um, I'm just pumped. I'm pumped. Is there anybody else you see that, that I didn't name that, that has a good chance? No, no, no. I, I think you hit the biggest names there. Uh, you know, my hope obviously is for Alan Flanagan, Janai, Yawan are the biggest ones that are probably going to be getting a lot of attention. But mm -hmm. the great thing is, you know, we had guys like Dylan Cardwell, uh, putting their names in the draft because they can and safely come right. back out after they get assessed um, and really kind of getting some feedback that way too. So really this is, you know, uh, nothing more than just an excitement period it, in the grand scheme of things right now for Auburn season and for their futures, it doesn't mean a whole lot because the season will determine more so of that, but this was the first stepping stone for them. 
it was the first stepping stone for us to begin to talk about these some of these things. It gave opportunity for Coach Pearl to kind of talk about what he's seeing so far through preseason practice. Because as, as you pointed out, we are, you know, two to three weeks from the recording of this episode from the season starting. And, you know, there's an exhibition before that. So for those of you that want to dismiss the football team right now, haha, you shouldn't be doing that funny, funny. But it is you are going to have something hopefully to make you very happy here very soon because basketball is going to be here for the guys for the girls i'm excited for year two for all of them and just hope that that kind of takes the next step for the women's program absolutely shooty hoops is back and well not officially yet but very close to it and i couldn't be more excited about it oh it's gonna be great and i I think a lot of people are excited ever since coach pearl got here it's been something people have started to look forward to earlier and earlier um and with a exit from the tournament last year uh people are excited and that, that's why would good you bring that, that up why well, would you bring yeah, that up it, 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 because we know what we need to build on and we're ready to you, make the national championship had, when the twins come to the world and we're ready to go we had a good thing going until you brought that up and now i'm sad again thank you thank well you i just that. want everyone to be excited and join me in neville crypto digital arena when we play George <laughs> stop stop all right all right that's <laughs> it we can't do this anymore <laughs> <laughs> with that being said uh that is episode eight uh for the auburn experience and we appreciate you guys riding along with us to talk about baby announcements you know just reveling in the sufferings of our biggest rival and looking a little bit forward to uh, the beginnings of basketball season on your way out please do make sure that you have, if you're interested about something that we talked about here that you want to expound more upon if you're listening on the podcast especially hit us up on our social media accounts at E2C Network, or if you want our personal ones, you can find me at Kyle Loomis 24. Austin, where can they find you? At Austin G. Scott. Please come check it out. Uh, please come look for that picture of the onesies. It, it's, it's pretty cute, I must say. And we'll definitely have to get a Sanford picture up there at some point. Uh, you committed to it now, live here, and you know, we, we don't pick these things down. So listen, it's got to be done at this point. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. It's, it's on record. Thank you guys so much for tuning in to the Auburn experience. And we appreciate you spending some time with us. Until then, more eagle. More eagle, everybody.